Choose Ms. Underwood's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, farmers in Northern Illinois, where I grew up and I now have the honor of representing in Congress, are on the front lines of the climate crisis. Across America, farmers are battling wildfires and floods and drought and extreme weather connected to climate change. These farmers in my district and throughout the country play a pivotal role in delivering climate solutions that will help preserve our planet for our kids. To support them, I wrote the bipartisan Farmers Fighting Climate Change Act, which was signed into law as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. This legislation directed USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service to establish climate change mitigation bundles within the Conservation Stewardship Program, or CSP. These bundles compensate farmers for agricultural practices that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and increase carbon sequestration, such as cover crops and no-till farming. These techniques not only combat climate change, but also improve soil health and water quality, providing broad benefits to farmers. We know the value of supporting farmers in their fight against climate change. So it was incredibly discouraging to see House Republicans include a $30 million rescission from the Natural Resources Conservation Service in fiscal year 2024. This rescission is especially damaging coming at this point as many farmers have already begun using CSP bundles. Uh, Mr. Secretary, how will cuts to NRCS affect the availability and effectiveness of CSP bundles and your staff's ability to help farmers? Well, over time, there's a direct correlation between the number of people available to help farmers and the amount of help they get. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen uh, with the additional resources from the IRA and the additional people that we've been able to hire as a result of the IRA uh, and the infrastructure law that we've seen a significant and historic increase in the number of conservation contracts. So uh, it is a direct correlation between the number of people and the number of contracts. Getting the word out about these programs and the incentives that they offer must be a top priority for USDA. Nearly 30% of farmers are unaware of the voluntary conservation practices that could help them earn more money while improving soil health and fighting climate change at the same time. What outreach efforts are underway at USDA to increase farmers' awareness of and participation in the Conservation Stewardship Program? And what resources would USDA need to improve its outreach efforts this year? We've entered into over 120 contracts with organizations and groups that have connection with historically underserved uh, beginning farmers, veteran farmers, the folks mm -hmm. who may not be able to be aware of the programs. Uh, over 75,000 contacts have been made. Uh, there have been a, a number of workshops. There have been a number of webinars. Uh, there have been a number of tech, about over 9,000 uh, of those individuals received technical assistance. Right. And we have uh, uh, hundreds of them signing up for, for, for contracts. So continuing that effort would be critically important. So what I hear you say is that this is popular. People want these resources, they want to sign up with USDA, and we have an opportunity to expand our reach with additional resources for outreach. Record, um, record levels. Excellent. So I'm encouraged to see that the President's budget request includes $985 million for NRCS with plans to hire thousands of employees to help implement farmer-friendly policies included in the Inflation Reduction Act. Could you elaborate on why a fully staffed NRCS is essential for supporting and empowering our farmers nationwide? Uh, the ability to determine precisely what kind of uh, opportunities are available. I've just got a list here of 20 different climate smart agriculture practices that the Excellent. NRCS has. And uh, under each one of these categories, there's multiple choices. It can be complicated. Um, and so it's important for folks to have the ability to talk to an NRCS person. Yes. They have their crop specialist, but maybe some farmers, small and mid-sized farmers, can't afford a crop specialist to provide that technical assistance. So they rely on the NRCS folks to provide them, this is what you should do, this is what you think about doing. Yes, sir. Well, if you could share that list with our office, we'll be sure to circulate that among our colleagues on the committee. I want to change uh, gears. The USDA's Office of Tribal Relations plays a critical role in serving as a dedicated point of contact for tribal issues, ensuring that USDA programs and initiatives are developed in consultation with American Indian and Alaska Native communities. Unfortunately, in fiscal year 24, House Republicans fell short of fully funding the Office of Tribal Relations posing significant challenges to its ability to carry out its essential work. I'm deeply concerned about the office's capacity to maintain critical functions and adequately support our indigenous communities. How does the Office of Tribal Relations plan to sustain its work in light of current funding, and what impact do you anticipate this will have on our tribal communities? We'll do our level best to make sure that we continue to focus on food sovereignty, continue to focus on economic opportunity with tribes. Uh, but the reality is if you limit the resources, you're going to ultimately limit the capacity of that office to do all the work that is, uh, it's interested in doing and that people in tribes are interested in having done. 
Yes, sir. Well, as we prepare for fiscal year 25 bill, I urge my Republican colleagues to carefully consider the ramifications of under, underfunding this critical office. Our farmers deserve uh, our full support. Thank you, Secretary Vilsack, and I yield back. Uh, thank you very much.